Now that we have that part knocked out, what I can do is adjust this particular layer. I could have done that in Photoshop before coming over, but that's fine. I just want to show in 3D Coat you can do the same. In the Textures menu, Adjust, and Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. By default, your saturation will be 100%. I'm going to turn on Preview, and I can drag my saturation slider or enter the value numerically. So I may want to leave a little bit of color. Hit OK. Let's bring this down to about 30. And now we want to bring up our 2D texture editor. And this is much like having your canvas in Photoshop right here inside the viewport. But the major difference between working this way in a 3D viewport is that we can invoke symmetry. Okay. And we can sketch on one side and 3D Coat is going to copy it on the other so that saves us quite a bit of time and we can work side by side that way if we want to work here in just in a 2D editor we can or here once you are sketching on one side here if you want you can copy it over using a clone stamp tool you have an option for symmetrical copy we'll look at that later on Okay, so we're about ready to start sketching. I created a new layer, and I can hit the X key just like I would in Photoshop to switch to a foreground color. I can choose something in the swatches or open up the color picker. And here in my 2D texture editor, I can middle mouse click and drag to pan. And hold down the Alt key while right clicking and dragging to zoom in. All right. So over here, I may want to save a camera view. That way I can quickly get to these without having to constantly zoom in and out. I have a 3D connection device, so if I want, I can lock the viewport from rotating. It will just pan and zoom, that's it. So let's go ahead and save a camera shortcut here from the camera menu. And choose Add Camera Shortcut, and you can navigate to the previous or the next shortcut. You can even delete a camera shortcut if you want. If I click here, it's going to save this one, but you would probably prefer to use your hotkeys in this case to make it much easier or much faster. So let's do that. Let's control up to save the camera shortcut. If I want to zoom in a little bit. Do the same thing. Control up arrow key. If I want to go back to the previous one, control left. Or if I want to go to the next one, a control right arrow key. And when you save the file, 3D Co is going to save this camera shortcut along with the file. So now we want to choose a brush. If you want to load your ABR brushes from Photoshop, uh, a couple different ways you could do it. You can scroll down to the bottom and click New to bring in a new brush. And with ABR brushes, a lot of times they're brush packs, so they have multiple brushes in one file. Let's say you have a dozen or so brushes in your ABR file. 3D Coat will load each of those here in the palette. You can also bring in image files like PNG, JPEG, and so on. You even have the capability, if you want, to create a 3D brush so that you can utilize it in your depth channel. So that's one of the unique aspects, again, of 3D Coat is that you have these three channels as well as your metalness channel where you can paint in them all simultaneously or using any combination of these. So in this case, we want to work with just color, but I realize I forgot to disable the depth and the specularity channels when I filled this particular object. So in order to quickly clear that without having to use the erase brush, what I can do is just select the layer and then enable whichever channels I want to remove when I hit the delete key. So in this case, I only want to remove specularity and depth. So I disable color because I want to keep it as is on this layer. All I have to do now is hit the delete key and it removes any depth or specularity or 
glossiness. So with that done now, I'm gonna enable color and turn these other two off. I'm also going to hit the S key to turn my symmetry plane, make sure it's turned on. And back to our brushes here. Think of these as brush tips. And in your E-panel, these brushes that you see here are just indicative of how 3D Coat is going to operate in accordance with your brush pressure. So it does different things whenever you apply more or less pressure to your stylus. So when you hover over it's going to indicate, for example, the second one, depth and opacity pressure are modulated. The third one, radius, depth, and opacity. So that's all three. And then the first one is just radius and depth. So you can choose which way you want to work. The absolute brush has no pressure dependency. It's kind of just a brute force. What you see is what you get sort of brush. You might think of this as kind of a control nozzle, if you will, and these are your brush tips. You also have stamps here, and then you have your selection marquees that in Photoshop you typically would see them on your toolbar, but here in 3D Coat they reside in the E-panel. Then you have a, a closed spline. You have a kind of a, a paint or brush along spline here. You have just a, a standard line and a curve. It's kind of a legacy tool. The last one is very important whenever you're trying to constrict or restrain the paint strokes to the boundaries of the polygons you're brushing over. After you've laid down your color, your depth, your, your glossiness and whatnot, you can always adjust here in your layer panel their opacity or their intensity level. For example, like your depth. You can always go a little bit high on your depth because you can easily bring it back down on an individual layer. You can also utilize the magnification and reduction brush. These will respectively modify the relief level of your normal or your displacement maps in a localized fashion. All right, so now that we've talked about the brush alphas, let's talk about stencils, which act as a masking overlay using grayscale values. I'm gonna reset the aspect ratio, then scale it. The main distinction between stencils and smart materials is that stencils project your foreground color through the masking image based on the brightness of your map. Whereas smart materials, even though it's also an overlay, it projects your image maps onto the model directly. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started now by going to our paint tool. And let's say in this particular instance, I want to sketch out some different concepts. Maybe I want to see what the horns will look like in different configurations or different shapes. So I can change my brush alpha to be a little bit sharper. And this third one, again, it modulates depth, radius, and opacity. The harder I press, the larger the line and the more opaque it is. The lighter the pressure, the thinner and the less opaque it is. So I'll undo that. Also, go to my preferences panel, brushing, and I may turn that up. Let's try two. Maybe that's not quite what I want. So again, I can clear color just by hitting the delete key. 